We live in a changing world. Earth has become increasingly small as advancements in technology continue and we humans stretch out our arms toward wilder places to call home. In our expansions, we also find an intersection of conflict as we learn how to live in our wild spaces, often remarkable and breathtaking, but potentially dangerous presence of nature and all of its creatures. Among them, the controversial grey wolf an iconic apex predator. In earliest recorded history of humans and predators, we humans have had a paradoxical love-hate relationship with predators. History shows us evidence of humans hunting alongside predators, almost a predatory partnership, as we similarly followed our food sources. Human ability to eliminate competition for prey and protect and defend livestock make being a predator an expensive and dangerous prospect. This documentary is about divisions that exist that resulted in the near destruction of a species. The forces that brought wolves back from the edge of extinction and the polarizing positions among stakeholders. Set to the story of 11 wolves who brought the subject to our doorsteps in the mid-1990s, this story is about what future we will choose as we strive to be a better and more informed stewards of this vast wilderness. Every single animal has an important role to play. We had, uh, as a culture, as a society, had just demonized wolves and other predators. Probably where it all first started was hearing howling in the forest, in the dark forest. I think that's probably where the first um, uh, ancient civilizations heard this howling going on and probably were a little frightened by it. And next thing you know, they're writing stories about the big bad wolf. And you know, it goes back to Little Red Riding Hood. But I also think that there's something even deeper about people not really being able to accept canids that are somehow crossing a line and killing livestock or behaving in a way that people don't want. There was uh, this mass hysteria that wolves were going to kill everything in their path and they were going to decimate not only the, the wild populations of elk and deer, but also decimate all of our livestock. They were a danger to children. People just said, well, the only good wolf is a dead wolf. But we perceive this competition as being a bad thing and not realizing that it was such an important part of the overall circle of life. We are part of nature. It isn't what's above or what's below. It's about relationship and interconnectedness. That's probably the, the greatest role of a manager or wildlife management in general is just trying to achieve a balance with a predator such as a wolf on the landscape in a fairly developed system that we have. We're pretty arrogant as a society in thinking that we could do it better or could do it by ourselves. And we need them. You know, we need them for our, our ecosystems to be healthy. And nature works. The big debate today is whether wolves have a place among uh, human populations and whether we can coexist with wolves and other iconic predators as well. They do pose a threat. It's in their DNA to enjoy that type of fresh meat. We just simply believe that you don't have to kill them to enjoy human progress. I don't see them going anywhere. I see this um, uneasy balance of humans and wolves finding what's a reasonable number of wolves on the landscape. And it's going to be higher in some places and lower in some places. We just have to adjust the way we live to live with them as part of this system. Wolves will probably tell or show us where they, where they can and will function. Some places it'll be easier. We have packs right now in Northeast Oregon, just to the north of us, you know, that have been here for years and we've had very little interaction or, and certainly no trouble with. Other packs have been sort of in trouble from day one. And I think we're gonna see that. There's gonna be places where wolves are gonna show us that it will work fairly well and other places where it won't work as well. <laughs>